Jyotish comes from Tantras. Vastu comes from Vedas. Is the particular difference and the Hindu Dharma today is an amalgamation of both. Your life should also be an amalgamation of both. In Hindu Dharma, you worship idols today. Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, Upanishads. They don't talk of idol worship. They are against idol worship, to be honest. But Tantra talks of idol worship and the Hindu Dharma that you have today employs the mantra from Vedas and idols from Tantras and gives you a way of life that have sustained over time. So the change with time is what have made the Sanatan Dharma sustain the balance of both. A good Vastu and a good Jyotish is what you are going to do. Now Rig Veda have this particular shloka. You can chant it every day as well as a Vastu practitioner or anyone who is having a bad Vastu, you can give this mantra to them. Vastu spate prati jani smantas swa vesho anamivo bhavana yatte mahi prati tanno jusasu samno bhav dipate sam chatuspate. This was a Vedic mantra. I took pains to translate it into literal Devanagari, but done. The translation is below, O God of Vastu, we are your real worshippers. Fake worshippers are also there. And it is specifically mentioned that fake, uh, fake worshippers are those who employ non-Vaidic things in Vastu remedies. They are fake worshippers. And those who apply real Vastu remedies are real worshippers. So it is there since the time of Rig Veda, by the way. Please believe this, that we are your real followers. Listen to our prayers and make us free from troubles and diseases. And please do good to us, our wives, children, and our animals, and all of them, anyone living in this property, you are bound to give them good results. This is what this mantra tells you. This you yourself can use for chanting. If you are having a bad vastu or anyone who is having a bad vastu can chant it. Chanting should be odd number of times, right? You know that. Once, thrice, five times, seven times, nine times, whatever. Right? That chanting will help you. Have a good vastu, at least the God of vastu, that is vastu purush to be merciful over you. Now here we come to Vastu Purush. Who is this Vastu Purush? Vastu Purush is not, a, see Purush is a bad word. It is a Vastu demon basically. So once again, let me come back to how Vedas tackle it. Vishnu have 28, around 24, 28 disputed incarnations. Now you generally know 10 of them. But there are 14 more. One of that is Yajna Purush. Vishnu have incarnated as a Yajna personified as a human. So Hinduism have an approach that everything is personified. Vedas are personified and the eyes of that person is Jyotish. Yajna is personified that is Vishnu. Time is personified that is Vishnu that is Kala Purush. In the same manner, Vastu is also personified. That is the Vastu demon, the one that you see in the Vastu image, you see a demon-like figure, right? If I am not wrong. This is that Vastu demon, but how does he come to come into being? This comes from Andhakasur. So first of all, do you know who is Andhakasur? Every god have killed one demon or another, and that there is always a story and you know, how Devi is killing Mahisasur, how Vishnu is killing Madhukaita and Ravan, and this and that. Shiva have killed this demon or Andakasur. If you ever see an image of Shiva, you will always see that he is sitting over a putting his leg over a small demon. This one. This is Andakasur in Natraj image. This is there. Dakshinamurti image. This is there. Any Shiva image not having this demon below his feet is an image which is going to create destruction in your life because andhak that basically means boundless senseless run for desires is on loose so shiva will be fulfilling your wish and you will forget your demarcation of how to do and how not to do it so what happened basically, Shiva was killing this demon, how, what is Andhakasur, how Andhakasur got killed, this, that. All of this story is already available. Go search it over internet. Okay. Now when 
Shiva was killing this Andak demon, a drop of sweat fell from his head. It fell on the ground. It became another demon, this Vastu Purush demon. He started drinking all of the blood of this Andagasur demon. Still, he was not satisfied. So what he did, he started worshipping Shiva again. Andakasur also became powerful by worshipping Shiva himself. He started worshipping Shiva just a second. Yeah. So he started worshipping Shiva, started doing penance to him. Shiva becomes happy. Shiva grants him a boon. He asks that Shiva, you give me the power to devour, eat all of this, whatever is into this world. Shiva tells, okay. Shiva is very innocent, you know, childlike. So Shiva is okay about it. Other gods are not. But they are frightful of this demon because first of all, he is born out of a sweat of Andhakasur who is already very terrible, who was already very terrible. Added to this, he have got the power to devour everything from Shiva also. So he devours the heaven, he devours the hell. And after that, he comes on earth. He falls on earth basically. So after jumping in the skies for devouring the heaven and the hell that he have successfully done, he falls on ground and you know how people fall. He falls on ground and as he tries to stand up, gods, certain in number, I will not tell you the number right now that they differ according to the type of vastu you're using. A set of gods pin him down by sitting on different body parts. Okay. This is how this complete vastu image is basically made. This is the demon. This is how he falls on the ground. Head in the northeast. This way he falls down. So he's basically looking downwards. Gods are sitting on different body parts of the demon. Right. However, I'm not very good with graphics. So you will have to work with this. Uh, actual city stuff. So, you know, this head goes into northeast direction and Shikhi, a god named Shikhi, sits over it. Eyes go into this particular portion. This is 81 portions in total. Eyes goes into this portion. Parjanya holds it and Diti holds it. Parjanya will hold the right eye. Diti will hold the left eye. Face is there and he is facing downwards. That's the basic point. Ears are held by Aditi and Jayant. Shoulders are held by Bhujang and Indra, etc., etc., etc. Basically, all this point, this complete area is your home area. So you have to take the measurement, divide it into these many parts. One part have this particular God ruling over it. Okay. Now let me teach you two big things in one single line. The basic point is that Swastu demon who have fall on the ground, downward facing, you should not let him rise. Because once he stands up, what he will do is he will eat your property first. And as he eats your property, he will eat you. That you don't want to happen. So for that, all of this have to be into a good situation. Now, as problems keep on coming, so this is Bhallat in the arms department in the north side, right? This is north. This is northeast. This is northwest. This is north. Bhallat is in this north. And if there is a problem related to Bhallat, if the Vastu requirements of Bhallat is not fulfilled, Bhallat is here, Bhallat is here also. If the Vastu requirement of this Bhallat is not fulfilled because Bhallat have held the arms of Vastu Purush, 
people living in this property will start having problems related to arms. Okay. Same goes with Mukhya Nag Rog also. So basically from the Northwest to just about the mid of North, if there is any Vastu problem, it is generally indicate health defects in the arms department. In the same manner, the center of the home is ruled by Brahma. This is Brahmasthan basically. It is another, the most important thing, the first most important thing in Vastu is Brahmasthan, the center of the property, center one, th one ninth of the property. So take the total dimension, front to end, east to west, north to south, one ninth of it is the center. Very important, have to kept clutter free. More clutter free it is, better it is. As dirt will come into this area, it will become dirty. Right? So dirt basically should not come into this area. If dirt comes into this area, if this area somehow goes into a bad shape, it, if it is not properly taken care of, Brahma rules the heart. So what will happen? The chances of heart stroke, heart diseases, cholesterol and all these things will come. So as you move into a property where around the center there is a bathroom, dirty place, or there is anything that is dirty, it is clogged, it is blocked. Either ways, heart problem, cholesterol issues you start having. This does not indicate love problems. This is the bodily heart. Right? Otherwise, if you are talking of love problems, southeast direction is ruled by Venus. So whatever comes into the domain of Venus, not clear from this table, should be ruled by the southeast section and whatever comes into the southeast section, are we very clear? This center part of the home, Brahmasthan, should be airy, should be free, clutter-free, no pillars here, nothing at all. To do this, to achieve this, if you see properties which are old properties, specifically South Indian properties, this is also very stringently followed in Bihar as well. The center of the home, generally nothing is built over it. The center of the home is always kept hollow from top to below. For an Like you see in this photo, if you can, you see the central part of the home is kept open. So basically what they do, they don't build anything over it. They just put small windows on floor over and over and over on all the floors to keep it most clutter free, most airy is generally what should be done in Vastu at the center. Only the plant Tulsi, Holy Bazil, is recommended. And other than Tulsi, even tree made up of gold and diamonds should not be placed. That is very bad. So only Tulsi should be done. Otherwise, nothing. This is the Vastu thing that you should follow. The center have to be clutter-free. Now, basically, in all these properties, no center is clutter-free from outside. Maybe from inside, that is clutter-free. Right, but that's the basic stuff that you are going to follow. The tip number one is your Brahmasthan should be clutter free. For example, this is a Kerala house dimension. If you see this property, now this will be
Now this particular property, just a map, small one. It will be measured from Yeah, this particular home will be measured in here to here. Right? Hmm, sorry, <laughs> will be measured from here the here to here, taking in consideration this frontal part. In a new construction, always remember it. Into a new construction, it will be measured this particular way. Taking it as an east facing home. Yeah, Brahmistan is covered for many properties. Sir, you're just coming to it. In a new construction, this should be taken as the frontal area made into Indra, Surya, Satya, this division. The center of east is Surya, right? So it is made in Indra, Surya, Satya division, Parjanya, Sikhi. Akash Anil Brish is left alone. Depressed on these sides, you can see two walkways in eastern direction. Two verandas in eastern direction. This is how it will generally be measured. Okay. However, if it is a reconstruction over property, even a little bit of reconstruction, if that is done over property, then it should be measured as the home dimension will be this much to this much. And this will be an extension in East. That is the difference in calculation for a home, which is built for the first time and the home that is renovated. Always very essential, highly recommended to have a square property. Or even if you make any type of amendments, it should be square or rectangular, only these two shapes, any type of increase, decrease. Not recommended at all. Now, if you see in this architecture, what you think will be a center, people generally use AutoCAD to do that. I will be measuring just mentally what I generally do. You can use any software for that matter. But if you see this should be the center, right? Now, what do you have to say about the center? How you think the center is? Once again, this should be the center, this part. This particular part is the center. What do you say about this center? There are two doors onto it. Puja room is on this side. Not a very good center as such. It should be clutter free. It can be blocked from above. That's not an issue, but it should be clutter free doors. This is wall. This is door. This is wall. This again is wall. These are walls. This is door. So basically the central space that is left is a very small space that is left. Not very good stuff. Another thing is things are surrounding the center. Puja room is okay. Bedroom is just fine. This toilet more goes on the south side, by the way. So that's not an issue. Sorry, this have to be south side. This will be north. Toilet goes on the north side, bad toilet. South side, there is kitchen, very fine. But there is this toilet in kitchen, which comes very close to Brahmistan as well. Cholesterol, heart related issues. Heart attack is eminent is what I will say right now. Other principles you will slowly, slowly learn. But heart attack is very eminent for me. That should not be done. This bathroom in this north direction, which is not very good as such. Go back to this table. This is just the center of north, which come into Soma department. Soma, Bhujang, Bhallat. Arms and shoulders are affected from this bathroom. Have to be corrected. For correction, a few things can be done. We'll come to that. Is the principle very clear? You have to take the center. One ninth of the dimension. Always remember it. One ninth of the dimension depending on what the dimension of the property is. 
वन नाइन्थ ऑफ दैट बोथ ईस्ट टू वेस्ट नॉर्थ टू साउथ बोथ इन लेंथ एंड विथ बोथ डिपार्टमेंट ओके वेरी गुड टू गो सॉरी For new properties, we'll always take the whole thing, and whichever part is cut out, we'll take that as the depression. Depression, yes. Newly built properties. Okay. It should be taken as this way. Now, this area. How I am supposing it? See, there are two ways to suppose it. You have purchased this much property. this area you have not purchased you have built it over a road it is an extension you have purchased this much area and left this much area while building this is a depression so that depends on how much property you own basically that is the point however for a new building construction always focus on depression for a reconstruction always focus on elongation okay and there is a very uh what you say there is a very common vastu rule followed here in around like this local is folklore muhavare ka aapte hote hain wo proverbs type something the gaumukhi plot and the sherumukhi plot the tiger faced or the cow faced land i should tell you basically the approach is the land which is wider from behind is cow faced the land which is wider from the front is tiger faced tiger faced is not good cow faced is good broad from behind narrow from front is the normal saying technically both of them are pathetic is basic it basically goes to a triangular land not recommended only rectangular squareish cylindrical that is a like what's another variation of rectangular and circular lands are to be taken circular lands are not good for all so hence you leave it generally not recommended circular property is generally not recommended for living making a hotel making a garden making a gathering very good if you want to live into a circular property not recommended if you ask me i will tell you square is the best why because into a rectangular property if it is elongated east to west it is surya vidhi sun controlled house not good if it is if the elongation falls in north to south it is chandra vidhi moon controlled house that is only good so in the rectangular or into the cylindrical shape you have to make sure that the extension is north to south that is good not east to west east to west elongation is good for temples not for your home okay because the prime setup is you want sunlight to fall on your home only from sunrise to midday not after midday if the sunlight is still falling after midday then it is a problem this will give many issues starting with fights and anger issues so basically north to south elongation is best recommended chandra vidhi ghar gives you happiness sukh right this is the basic point that you have to consider while choosing a plot now after choosing that plot there is one more thing acha ha sorry we were on this vastu purush 
So one point is very clear that at at a few places you will see I have written a body part as well. There are many uh, there are many variations of this particular table that you will be encountering in the coming four months. Let's be very careful about the table. I have written body parts in these blocks which are highlighted with what is this color? Some shade of red. Some body parts are written. And when there is a problem in that particular department, that particular body part is affected. Generally for everyone, specifically for the owner of the product, right? Now into this Marmista, into this Vastu Purush, there are Marmistans. Marmistan, you know what you call sensitive points. There are sensitive points in this Vastu diagram. This is the sensitive point basically. One thread is taken from northeast to one is taken from Shikhi. There are three marmsthanas here as well that you have to keep into consideration. Yeah. In this dimension, there are six lines that you cannot see. I have to tell it to you. From Shikhi, this is a line. Sorry, these are not even basically. So because it is not even, you cannot see it. It is not going through the blocks, but it have to go through the blocks. A slant line from Aditi to the Sugri, Shikhi to Pitra, Jayant to Bringa, Rish to Mukhya, Vayu to Roga, and Vitat to Shosh. Three lines in this direction, three lines in this direction, imagine. Now, wherever this is falling, Shikhi area, Pitra area, Vayu area, and there are other areas in between as well. And all these lines that are falling over it. The Shikhi, Apa, Apavats, Brahma, 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 basically none of Brahma, Indra, Jaya, Pitra, all these blocks that are being covered by this line, primarily there should be no pillars here. That's the basic point. Okay. This, these are the most sensitive points of Vastu Prasad. You have to avoid pillars into these most sensitive points, which are coinciding with the Sikhi, Apa, Apavatsa, Brahma. And for this, you have to take a properly made dimension, all the total parts of it. Basically, what is being done, it is divided into nine parts, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. This was the ninth one, which we also considered there. So the length and the breadth of the property should be taken, should be divided into nine parts each. This part will remain common in the calculation. Nine, nine parts each based on the dimension is what you are going to do. 
and then you have to exactly measure where the sensitive points are coming and avoid making pillars or any heavy structure over the sensitive point otherwise this vastu purusha who is already pinned down will have a lot of weight and then the brother of vastu purusha will come to disturb you that is andak and so you don't want it to happen this is very clear these are the three four things that you have to essentially keep into mind from day one essential parts the most essential thing is this particular marm sthan the sensitive points the second most important thing will be the main door and the third most important thing will be walkway veranda gallery whatever you say the walking space that you leave around the property these will be three important things there is one more stuff you know if you see a land there is a slant into the land now what slant it is this you first have to understand this is a slant of the land you cannot find this slant in home if a home is west facing like let me give an example of a property there is a home main door in the west so you enter the door and then there are a few steps covering those few steps you come to the level of the property right and then the whole property is made so basically this is depressed from the western side keeping in mind that there is a west entry this is not a depression this is not a slant at all okay now generally when you see a property a normal one property not worked upon few areas are slanted and few areas are uprised this is also seen with respect to surrounding buildings low rise buildings high rise buildings 